So today, quite a few new goodies have turned up. I know what some of them are. Can't remember what some of them are as well. So let's get to unboxing them. These are some little project boxes. Just some uh, clear waterproof ones. This is a little Arduino to control the indicators and possibly some other stuff in the future. This is some Velcro, which I'm gonna to try to use to attach these to the bike so they can be um, detached easily. This is a bottle of Loctite. These are the e-brake cutoff sensors. This is a little five volt or adjustable actually, but DC to DC converter. About five meters, I think, of braiding um, to make cabling look neat and tidy. These are a load of connectors for doing all the wiring. And here is all the wire for us. So these are 16 gauge black and yellow. These are gonna be for the, like the headlights and the main power wiring. Again, these are the silicone wire that I use for the battery from the component shop. Brilliant place. Um, and then a wide range of, uh, oh, I've got some blue as well. Wide range of 22 gauge for all the kind of minor stuff. And again, a whole load of heat shrink for all that. All right, here is the inside of the bike. Here's one of the boxes. Now that's actually less space than I thought. So the idea is one box goes on this panel here and the other box goes on this panel here. So I'm just gonna have a fiddle around with seeing how I can get each box to fit in basically because then all the like relays and stuff will actually go inside. Uh, mainly just to keep it all self-contained but also gives a bit of protection. Um, that's the idea behind it and then we'll have a hole on the side for all the wires to come out put connectors on so that it's easy to remove stuff in the future, use silicon wire, use braiding, basically do a proper job. So you can see even on this one, um, originally I wanted it coming kind of straight out horizontally, but because of the switch up here um, and the head tube at the back, I think it's gonna have to go at an angle like that, which is parallel to the bottom plate. I'm hoping the one on this side, I'll either do it to match it, but I think it will fit better because there's no key switch here but that looks like how it's gonna have to go and I'm glad I went with the size I did because the size I actually wanted was out of stock so I went for the smaller one and it only just fits so as usual I'll put a link in the description to everything I'm using but so the way I'm gonna attach these is with the velcro it's still got a bit of wiggle it's not super secure but I think that's as good as we're gonna get haters hate in the comment tell me how I should do it eh? oh what did I say so the one on this side isn't gonna fit in like that because it hits at the end so what I can do is get that wire out of the way and put it vertically like this and it just clears the gap now what this means is that I'm gonna have to put them in in a particular order which will be that one then this one and then we've also got the main power wire for the BMS just up here, which will run over the top. Right, so that's the second box mounted in pretty securely. So what I'm going to do is take them both out and start wiring up the 12 volt one, which I'm going to make this one over here and make the upright one the 5 volt and Arduino one. This is a set of four relays, which will be for high beam, low beam, left and right indicator. And the plan for this to go here, and as you can see, there's not a lot of room but the signal connectors won't take up space, so I can push it over to that side. And then we've got a fair amount of room for the um, 16 gauge wires to come out here. So for the headlight, it came with this adapter, which I cut half it off, which goes to the headlight. And then I'm gonna use this 16 gauge wire to splice onto here and go to the relays. Now this is switched positive, you have a common ground and then you change the 12 volt setting depending on whether you want high beam or low beam. This is all gonna go into the headlight housing here um, and I can use this to kind of hide any excess wire but I'd rather have it more or less accurate. Obviously it's better to have slack and hide it in here than to have a really tight cable that's not really gonna do much good. So I've also made a hole in the side of the enclosure. It's not the neatest hole, and I will get a grommet for it, just haven't got one yet. So I'm gonna put this through the hole, and then we'll wire it up into here, and take it from there, really. Right, so quick rundown before I turn it on. I've got the high beam and low beam wires going in. I've then got the positives connected together and onto this bullet connector here, which will then jump over to the other box, which will have the 12 volt butt converter in it. The ground then comes up here, which again will go to the ground wire, which goes over to the other box. 
and then we have the connector on the other end. Progress is being made, um, as you know, got the headlights all wired up and I've made the leads for the um, indicators, put the connectors on the end and labelled it so this one is back right indicator and then these are the shorter front ones and I've also added this connector here which connects to each of the light outputs and this will feed into the dashboard as like a feedback for when the indicators are on or when the headlights are on and all that. Those are the wires that will go to the Arduino uh, to fire the relays for the indicators and this is the 5 volt power that will power the whole module these are going to go through to the other box, so I'll wait until I've got all the wires that are kind of like interconnect wires between the boxes, which will be the power wires for here as well. Just to give you guys an idea, this is the kind of treatment I'm giving pretty much to each wire. So I'm putting the connector on the end here, and then I'm putting little bits of heat shrink spaced down to bunch the wires together, and then I place the braiding on the outside when it's done, put a label on the end, and that is a finished wire. And also with the braid, I make sure just to use the flame just to keep all the ends together so that when you put it on, it doesn't all splay apart. Also, I've got some nice new carbon fibre handlebars to fit, which Tony over at Vortex sent me, so cheers, Tony. Here I have it all laid out on the floor. It's a little bit of a mess, but it's just a demonstration. So I've got a power supply here, which will supply 5 volts for the control and 12 volts for the main power. I've got the switch here with the high and low beam settings going into the relay, so one wire goes to the 5 volts and then the low beam wire goes to one relay and the high beam wire goes to the other relay. So let's give that a try. Low beam, that's interesting. So even though it only fires the high beam relay, the light does both. So low beam, high beam. I don't even see it on camera. So here's the other bolts and just a quick little test fit. We've got the um, buck converter in here for the 12 volt system. And then the um, Arduino and 5 out on this separate board here, which can just slot in um, on the other side. And those two fit very nicely in here. We've got, got a fair amount of space for wires and all that. So I now have these two boards running off this main blue and black cable here. And if I turn my power supply on, you can see we've got a red light for the main board and a green light on the Arduino. So now it's all connected up. I've got the little box here with the 12 volt wires coming out into the connectors for the headlight and the indicators and ground respectively and also the 5 volt connector which powers the relay uh, to trigger them. It's been on for about 8 minutes and already that heat sink is really hot. Um, I can't hold my finger on that. Um, the 5 volt one is fine but what I'm probably going to have to do is add a fan. This setup has been running for about 45 minutes now. The hottest thing is actually the lamp. Like, I can feel the back of it, it's really hot. And if I put my finger in and feel the heat sink, that is, that is quite hot. Um, but as I say, this will be on the outside, so that should be fine. Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. That's really cool. I can barely feel that. So right now, I'm just working on getting the Arduino set up. So I've written a little script, and when I push the left indicator, we get an indication on the serial monitor here that updates every now and then, um, just to tell us it's on. And if I flick it to the right indicator, it changes to right indicator on. Okay, now it's all connected and when I flick the switch, we well, get the relay flashing. So that's a delay of 500 milliseconds. So it's off for half a second, then on for half a second. I might decrease that just so it flashes faster to make it more visible. Um, oh yeah, and the other one also works. Now it would be quite easy to add a hazard button where it does both of them at the same time. Um, you don't need one, but I can add it if I want. That all fits comfortably in there. This is the one for the boost converter. So I've got a 22mm hole with a 20mm grommet. That's a nice fit there. Got a fan on the top with a laser cut hole now. And some small holes drilled on the side so that when I turn it on, the air comes in here and then can escape out of these holes here. And that works perfectly. As you can or rather can't see, it's dark. So if we turn the power supply on... We get the daytime running light, which hopefully isn't completely washing out the camera. Um, and you can see that projects onto the wall there. Then down here, we have the brake light, which you can see is pretty bright on its own. And if we just switch the indicator on, you can see that's all wired up and bolted on um, and everything. Also get this little bit actually showing behind. And then the brake light itself works very well too.
It is finally done. Everything is mocked up here on the floor. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough. The few new things I want to show you first, which one of them is the dashboard here. So I've wired up the main power, which is this blue line here to the battery positive. That turns the actual display on. Then we also have these buttons down here, which are for the modes. So if I go over to the handlebar, so the throttle, we've got eco mode, uh, normal mode and sport mode, which will be the power mode on the Sabaton, which will go to this wire here. So, quick overview, if you want to skip this part of the video, go ahead. The power from the battery comes into these two lines here, which then go into this box here. Inside here, we have a first buck converter, which takes the battery voltage down to 12 volts. That then goes into a 5 volt buck converter, which takes the 12 volts down to 5 volts, which powers the Arduino and also a fan just to keep this one cool when the high beam's operating. The Arduino uh, takes in the indicator signals from the switch here and turns two lines on and off, um, which go over to this board here, which is where the main relay board is for the indicators and high beam. So the signals from the Arduino go to the inputs of two of the relays. One relay to the left, one relay to the right. I then connect the front and back indicator for each side which is colour coordinated. So blue is right and green is left. The front indicators run over here to the front which will be by the headlights and I've got them on extenders here. That is all powered by these yellow and black thick wires which come from the 12 volt converter and then have these bullet collectors, one which powers the indicators and also the daytime running light on the headlight and the other one goes directly to these other two relays which are for the low beam and the high beam. So we've got a low beam and high beam which just turned on that LED right at the bottom. The handlebar switch itself has one two position switch for the indicators and a three position switch for the high beam which I've braided up, comes in this hole here so the high beam ones connect to the relay which switch it positive and the indicators come from the Arduino which also switch positive. The next thing is the brake light which is permanently on this low state and is just wired straight into the 12 volts from here. And then the brake light itself is activated by these relays here which are triggered by these magnetic sensors which will fit to the handlebars and detect when I pull the brake levers in, like so. The final thing which I will go into more detail on probably in a later video is the dashboard itself. So the main power wires which are the red and the yellow one, one of them is technically for the memory but I'm not going to worry about that because that's only for the clock. The other wire I think is the green and black wire which are in this connector here. These go, the red and yellow go to the battery positive and the black goes to the battery negative and what that does is just lights up this display here with the odometer and miles per hour and everything. Now to get these lights at the bottom here working, you need 12 volt power and ground, which are in this connector here, the green and the black wire. So the black wire is annoyingly the positive and the green wire is the negative. So you wire the black wire up to the 12 volts and the green wire up to the ground and that will provide power for these buttons. Now when you first turn it on, the normal is on by default and then if you connect up the handlebar switches like these and you connect them up to this connector here which is the green and blue and the blue and white connector uh, I can't remember which way around it is, I'll put the diagram on the screen but when you connect one of them to zero volts you get eco and when you connect the other one to zero volts you get sport and that overrides that normal light. Now for the indicators, so these are switched negative or switched to zero volts. The indicators are switched positive which is handy because it means you can just connect it to the positive line going out to the indicators themselves because um, these have a common ground and then the relay connects them to 12 volts and disconnects like so. So you just connect the output of each indicator to this connector here. So again, I'll put the diagram on with the exact pinouts. But you connect the indicator lines to positive and then I'll light up something like that. And the ground for this is again provided in this connector I talked about earlier, the green and the black one. And the headlights, very similar story, you just connect the um, inputs to the dash directly to the positive output for the high beam and low beam. So you get the high beam, sorry the low beam which is that position light 
and the high beam, which is the blue one. And that is the crash course on using the CT22 dashboard. If you still have any questions, because quite a lot of people have actually asked me about this, put it in the comments below and I'll go more in depth. Anyway, now on to fitting it to the bike. So, slight delay, it's taken me about three days just to get the battery all balanced up, making sure that all the cells drop at the same rate. So just making sure all the connections are good basically. But now that's done and they drop at more or less the same rate, it's time to get all the stuff installed. Now if you actually want to see how I've mounted it all, then go check my previous video which will be in the top right hand corner. So what I'm basically going to do is a time lapse and then explain some of the wiring in between. So let's go. Just to show you that things aren't always rosy when building an e-bike, I built it up in my workshop and it worked absolutely fine on my power supply. However, now I'm connecting to the bike, I'm getting this issue. So you can see down here that the black and blue wires go onto the subton which is connected up the battery. So these are connected straight to the BMS which I think will be a key point in a moment. If I go into the app and make sure that it's turned on, you'll see It comes on and then it turns straight back off again. And we get an error saying abnormal start. So I've got to figure out what's going on. Now what I'm going to do is remove the BMS from the equation by directly connecting the output of the battery to the controller and everything. Now ignore the noise. I think the fan might be a bit dodgy. But you can see that we've got high beam everything, indicators. Um, if I activate this, Got the dashboard as well, got the modes, and that's simply from removing the BMS. So something on the BMS, it's probably a setting to be honest. I suspect it could be to do like the inrush current or something, but yeah, just proof that it doesn't always go to plan. Well that was an easy fix, weird but easy. Basically in the BMS settings, it was the um, short circuit protection delay, which is this one here, it was on 750. Um, I set it to 2000, didn't cut off, brought it down to 1000, didn't cut off. So I'm guessing the butt converter suddenly starting up causes a big inrush, which I thought the Sabaton would too, but I don't know. So yeah, if you're getting an abnormal start error on this BMS, try changing the short circuit protection, increasing it a bit. Obviously you want it to be as low as possible, because if something goes badly wrong, you want the BMS to cut out suddenly. But yeah. That's what did it for me, and now if I turn this on, you can see we get everything as normal. Got our high beam and everything, indicators, brake light, and if we turn it on, got a display too. Again, ignore that fan noise, I need to sort that out. So yeah, a few teething problems in the, I've wired this switch up back to front so it goes, uh, sorry, turn these off. Nothing, high beam, low beam, it should be nothing, low beam, high beam. Um, also the kill switch is on backwards so this is going to be kill and that's going to be run but now that's run and that's kill but yeah nothing this can't be sorted so here's the bike actually on in the dark that's the just the low beam you can see it's quite a wide pattern goes pretty far pretty bright and the high beam goes really far really excellent actually so it's turn it off so I don't blind anyone uh, indicators from the back and everything Love the look of that dashboard by the way, it's just so cool. And the brake light, 